you've got the whole run of your show. Is it how you thought when you guys are are in production versus once it lands on people's TV sets? Yeah, it was it, it was a strange one because it was so heavily steeped in truth, but it's so fantastical. The challenge felt was where to land it tonally because you read it, you can read it as a farce. You go, this is ridiculous. And what the KGB in the United States in the early 80s were doing was farcical. Uh -huh. So you're going, how do I land this in a credible real place the audience follows you? And you know, because as much as I'd go to the writers and go, this is ridiculous, and go, I know, but it happened. So you kind of go, what do I do then? They're like, mm -hmm. make it look real. And you go, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> so it was always tonally, what, that was the greatest challenge of going, I was always going, oh my God, how'd you land this? Things are changing back home, opening up. And, and it's not just politics, it's, it's the young people, it's music, it's, it's different. I mean, they're talking about opening a pizza hut in Moscow. You see the papers. What, the Washington Post? You know, all this talk, Perestroika and Glasnost, the Americans eat it up. They want us to be just like them. I don't want to be like them. One of the best accolades, again, was in the third season. They were called illegals. They weren't even called spies. We had an, a real illegal who was a guy from East Germany who was tra trained six years in, in Moscow, uh, adopted an American accent, spent time in Canada, brought into New York with the most ridiculous mandates from the KGB. Mm -hmm. And he just went, you got it right. And you go, oh, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sadly, that's only one man. That's not the audience. Well, right? you go, that's enough. But that's... I know, but you do. You just go, oh, yeah. great, great. Mm -hmm. So that, those, it's those moments you go, yeah. oh. Yeah, you hang on I'll, to those. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll write that on the mirror. You oh, obviously thanks. had a very memorable episode of, of Girls in, in the final season, yeah. I believe. Yeah. For those who don't, I had to take my penis out and put it on Lena Dunham at the end of the episode. But not my penis. When you say penis. on her. Yeah, on yeah, her no. thigh. I just literally literally thigh. Hard. Oh, that's yeah, when yeah. I knew it would be prosthetic. Yeah. Like, Did you have like, a choice of like preference of No, words? Lit yeah. literally when I had this, literally <laughs> the prom guy go. bigger on an arm. So <laughs> 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 I know. I know. Yeah. 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 There's the producer no. director. No, no, no. There's the right producer director. Yes. We used our own penises. Yes, back in the day. I know. Wait, so Such a yeah, luxury you get to choose. <laughs> the props guy just went, do you want to choose your penis? And I was like, <laughs> and then you have that in the conversation where you go, if I choose a huge penis, <laughs> you'll go, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, or a small So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it in your capable hands. <laughs> and he went, Some, somewhere in the middle. I was like, bingo, okay. thank you. <laughs> and that was it. So, but yes, you know, so that took away the element of, of great, greater concern. Um, but <laughs> no, the right Did you think it was real? I knew it wasn't. You knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't. How'd you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd, I think let's I'd not, read it not, somewhere. Not, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> How many penises did the prop department present you? I don't with? know. It was it was one of those moments where you kind of turn and it's like it's like Medusa or something. Oh, oh, oh my god, ten. what is that? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to think of like a prop guy that I'd say like sweating. I'd say I'd say uh, between around eight, I would have said. I think they give you the suitcase of sunglasses. Yeah. Which one do you think suits you? Yeah, yeah. But just kind of that golden glow on your face when you're shot from behind. You're like, oh! <laughs> I've heard of this suitcase. Complete the sentence. I wish Hollywood would cast me as. Very specifically, for a long time, I've been I, I've been trying to get this project made about the guy, you know, Griffith Park, uh -huh. in, in LA, the guy who gave Griffith Park to the observatory. To, guy. Yeah, to LA. Griffith. It was a Welsh guy called yeah. Griffith Jenkins Griffith, uh -huh. and his life reads like a, a script. So can't, and you can't get it made. Trying to get it made. Okay. So Hollywood, I'd like Heard to hear it first. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most amusing or frustrating feedback you've received in trying out for a part? I have one. Go. But it, uh, nothing was actually said. I went to a casting. <laughs> nothing went to a casting. I could hear the casting uh, agent on the phone, and the assistant said, "Ah, oh, she's in the middle of a very important call. If you sit down and wait." The call went on and on and on. Sitting, the assistant kept apologizing. Then about a forty-five minutes, the assistant went, um, "Can you come into the office?" And I could hear she was in the middle of a heated. <laughs> heated conversation. I walk to the doorway, I stand at the doorway, she's going, I know, I know. She looks at me, she goes, <laughs> the assistant just went. <laughs> oh, that was it, that was it. Nice. That's what I knew that's, I wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm J.K. Simmons. Hey, it's Michael B. Jordan. Hello, I'm Claire Foy. I'm Sandra Oh. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter Roundtables on YouTube. Watch it again. <laughs>
and again. Mm-hmm.